Hi everyone, thank you again for joining. I see a lot of um, familiar names in the audience. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nihali, I'm a cloud architect and I work with the partner ecosystem. And prior to joining Microsoft, I have experience working with service providers in a data center networking and security team. So welcome again and thank you to our moderators and presenters for working behind the scenes um, to support this live event. As I men mentioned last time, um, as you join uh, on this journey of networking sessions with me, imagine yourself as a cloud architect running these exact envisioning sessions with your potential customers or cross-functional teams for that matter, right? Um, using this approach of diagramming and storytelling with layers. It's Again, the art of the possible and more importantly, understanding the why behind the networking design options, right? And lastly, um, keep a growth mindset. Today we're going to be showing you some features that are in private preview. We want to caution you that we while we don't recommend those for production workloads. The idea is that we learn and grow together, all right? And I'd love to hear about your scenarios. And if you are a partner and would like to present in the future ses sessions, do reach out. We still have some open slots. So on my screen, uh, what you are seeing is a global transit network architecture using Azure Virtual WAN. In the last week's session, we did Azure Hub and Spoke design. This is also a Hub and Spoke architecture. The main difference being that the central hub that you see um, is, is a managed service. It brings um, some of the routing and security services together. Of course, the scale and performance numbers are different. Um, so be, do, do check it out on our limits um, documentation. So in this session, um, we'll go over a lot of the common design patterns uh, and scenarios. So let's get started. Uh, so first I'll get you familiar with my screen because you're going to be looking at it for, um, for, a, for the next half hour or so. So let me get you familiar with my screen. So what you see in the top left hand corner over here is that draw.io is integrated uh, with VS Code. Um, of course, I, I also have Git integrated. So when I update these diagrams, I can check it directly into Git, GitHub. And then I have layers over here. We will go into a lot of depth with layers, but for now I just want to show you that there are a lot of pre-created layers. Then there is in the center, you see this um, VBAN, VHUB, uh, and then the two spokes. So that's on the Azure side. On the bottom, you see um, your on-prem sites. It's a hybrid connectivity architecture, so bottom is all private connectivity. You also see a few tabs over here. Today we'll cover the first few tabs, um, so VVAN, and then we'll go into some details of multi-region as well. All right, so with that, um, let me, um, before we dive into the layers, I want to do a short demo of Draw.io. So you can follow along with me how these layers are created. So I'm going to bring another screen here. You can you can see the screen. So again, in the interest of time, I have pre-staged the hub and spoke architecture on the left hand side. Now I have a detailed YouTube video uh, that shows you how to get here on the left side, and um, it, it's it's on my it's on my YouTube channel. So do be sure to to check it out. Um, it, it the main goal of this demo is to demonstrate layers and you will notice that my session my screen is slightly different from the presentation last week what you are seeing 
um, is has a lot more real estate and what it is is a draw IO app um, that's also available in the Microsoft Mic marketplace and the feature that we are using um, is called draw IO board and it's very similar to whiteboard. Um, I use this board while running sessions with customers that bring in, for example, their own design. I want to annotate on top, um, you know, to drive more engagement and collaboration. So that's the use case for this board. Um, it's, it's again, it's still draw IO under the hood. Um, so let's um, let me show you a, a quick demo of how um, the layers are created. And before that, I'll give you a quick actually overview of the different parts of this screen so you can follow along with me. Um, so here you would see that um, there is a little um, pain for uh, bringing in shapes and objects and you can even hide it. So I really like how you can collapse and get so much real estate on on your whiteboard and then this on the top is a menu um, that you can uh, pull in layers and other things and at the bottom you can also uh, get tabs if you need it to and notice I brought in an image over here so for example, this could be your customer's architecture that that you know you want to talk about, but I just brought in a sample image so you get the idea. All right, so I'm ready to demonstrate layers. So what we can do, let's move this on the side a little bit. Um, what we could do um, is let's bring in the layers pane. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the way you could bring this whiteboard is using this theme called sketch. The sketch gives you that whiteboard look and feel in, in draw.io. All right, so let me bring up the layers pane. And again, I'm going to um, do a little. Uh, I'm going to show you what to look for as I move around my mouse. So in this layers panel, there are there are the three ellipses right here, and then there is a plus sign over here. I'm doing this demo again because we have almost doubled our registration from last session. So just to keep everyone kind of follow along with me. Um, for the rest of the session. So so let's add a few layers here. One, two and three. As you can see, they show up as untitled layers. So we'll call this hub spoke. Uh, we'll call this branches. And we'll call this flows. All right, and now how do we move these um, layer uh, these this architecture into layers, it's very easy. You select the objects of interest and then you go to these ellipses and then you move it to hub spoke. You select these branches and then you click on this ellipses, move them to branches and then you can control click and select these individual flows and then you can move them to the flows layer. And now let's see if the flows, if the layers work. So we turn off the Flows, we turn off the branches, we turn off the hub and spoke. There we have, let's bring it back up again. And there we have a full, fully layered hub and spoke architecture that we just did in minutes. All right. And then a lot of you have asked me about this flow animation. So I'll just take a minute to show you how that is done. Um, so let me uh, bring this format panel over here and the way the flow animation is done is if you highlight the flow uh, there is a property if I can get that here there is a property called flow animation so if I uncheck that the flow stops and then um, you can animate the flow all right so uh, I'm now going to go back to my uh, the main part of the presentation and now that we know how these layers are created, um, you can you can follow along with me. All right, so let me move this out of the way. So here I would close this uh, explorer so we get more real estate. 
And then again, I want to show you how these layers are, are created in, uh, in the actual um, So here you would see that I have what I called a base layer. The base layer would always stay on. Notice the little eye icon. When the eye is open, that means the layer is lit up. And hence the rest of the layers you see really grayed out, grayed out. but I'll walk you through what it looks like. So once the base layer is lit up, I have various other scenarios that lay on top of the base layer. So this is scenario one, two, three, and so on. All right, and as we progress along, I will light up the layers and then we can walk through various design patterns and various scenarios. So let's get started with our first layer. So I'll light up another base layer, which is also uh, which is the second region. And then we will light up the rest of the layers as we as we progress in this. So all of the base layers are lit up. There is an optional base layer called IPs. Like I mentioned before, there is no networking discussion without IPs, right? So I, I like to put IPs sometimes for my labs, sometimes for conversations with the uh, with the customers. Um, so for most part of this, we would turn this off to, to keep it uncluttered. So let's look at scenario number one. And so now the way we will approach this whole session is we will talk about flows. And by flows, I mean IP connectivity. So let's focus on the default flows. So as you can see with this green lines, what these green lines are showing you is IP connectivity. And the, what that means is from spoke one, you can talk to branch, uh, a site to site connected branch. The first two, of course, are site to site connected. And then the, the these two are express route connected branches. So it is showing you that you can talk uh, from spoke to a site to site connected branch. Similarly, the pink box is a point to site client, a client VPN, a client, what we call client VPN. So all of these green flows are working flows. They provide you IP connectivity. Same way, let's light up the region, region two flows. I'll make it a little bit smaller so we can see everything at the same time. So now um, we are seeing that within the same region, you are getting all of the working flows. So now let's look at inter region. By that, what I mean is this is region one and this is region two. So let's look at the inter hub flows. So I light up inter hub flows. And sometimes if you just want to focus on the flows of interest, you can uncheck the other ones. So that's what I did. I uh, For now, we'll look at inter hub flows. Now there is a lot to see, but they're all color coded. So follow along with me. And sometimes you will see in our documentation or our uh, Microsoft architects talking about VHHV or something that's really short. So what that means is that this flow is going from a VNet to a hub to another hub to a VNet, right? So this orange flow uh, is, is that that flow. And again, unless I mark a flow as red, that means you have IP connectivity. Again, we haven't added the firewall layer yet. This is strictly we're talking IP routing, IP connectivity. Um, and then this pink flow, of course, is showing a, a spoke on one region talking to a branch on another region, right? And then this blue flow, very, very powerful construct. A branch on one end is talking to branch in another region. Branch in one region talking to the branch in another region. Essentially, you are getting IP routing between your branches through our Azure backbone. 
So that's where um, that's where this is very, very powerful. And then of course the green flow is um, the one uh, express route to express route uh, always goes through global reach. All right, so that's uh, and so if you if I light up everything, right? So let's let's just look at everything together. So you could see the as a service part of this design that you are getting full any to any connectivity um, as part of this design. Now, if you want to get exactly what I'm showing in this diagram in one click. Mark, our global black belt from our UK office, has done a fantastic um, lab or a hack uh, with various challenges explaining um, the concepts and uh, the why, uh, you know, each flow works certain way and how you can light up all of these flows. So be sure to check it out. There is a link in the FAQ if you want to do it. And again, thank you, Mark, for doing such a wonderful uh, lab for everyone. So with that, I'm going to turn off scenario number one so that we can look at the second pattern. So let's light up scenario number two. Now, what drives the need for scenario number two? As you can see, we got a little firewall icon on in both of the region. So scenario number two is about bringing firewall capabilities into the V hub and we call it secured VWAN hub. So when as you follow along um, with this with me, you will notice that there are quite a few flows to keep uh, focused. I have divided them first into north south, so let's look at north south first and the terminology north south in this diagram really means that the egress from this egress from this site, right? So uh, and any express route connected site or any branch reaching the Internet through the Azure, the firewall in Azure. OK, and again, um, you know, a couple people asked me about this, but this AVS site is just a representation for all practical purposes. This could be any express route connected branch. All right, so let's look at how this is working. Now there are two important things to observe over here. You could see that we are advertising the zero slash zero or the quad zero route down uh, down this way, and you could also do that uh, to if this is an express route connect uh, IPsec BGP over IPsec. If you're running, you can you can advertise it down that way as well. And what that does, it is it drives this uh, flow. All right, and of course you can also have um, spoke reaching the internet through this firewall in the in the hub. Of course, you cannot advertise quad zero this way. And same thing with region two, right? So now that we know north south, let's look at east west because there are a lot of flows to see. I've divided them into layers so we can we can look at them individually. Now. Here, what you are seeing, and, and best is to focus on one region when we are doing this. Um, so we'll focus on this region, OK? So you can follow along with me. Uh, here, what you are seeing is that when we brought this firewall in the secured VWAN hub, the green flows are traversing the firewall, right? So you get the firewalling capabilities with that. However, the branch to branch is still bypassing the firewall, so it's important to know the difference there. Now let's look at interhub, right? So we'll look at interhub connectivity. So again, at this point, I will caution you. We are going into level 300 of Azure networking. What you are seeing here is that a spoke in one region cannot talk to spoke in another region. The reason being, and of course, this is a scenario with the secured VWAN hub. The reason being that uh, the traffic gets asymmetric. The dashed line is showing you the traffic going from this spoke 
to this spoke and the dotted line is the return traffic. As you can see, the return traffic gets asymmetric that this traffic bypasses. The first flow bypasses it and the return traffic um, gets asymmetric, so that flow breaks. Now, how do we solve? What are our options in this scenario? Let's look at the next layer. I put a little light bulb over here to give you ideas on what you can do. Again, this uh, as an architect, I would call this in an increasing order of um, best practice or um, you know, you, you optimal design. That, that's the right term I was looking for. Um, so today I would if routing intent feature is not available, but if it, it is designed to solve that flow, it's still in public preview uh, for single region only. Then we have a tiered VNet design, and I'll show you exactly how to do that using a tiered VNet design. And then the third option that we have, and I, I would call it a workaround, um, is using the express route bow tie design, uh, which I will cover in the multi region. And you can get that spoke to spoke flow through the express route bow tie design. Again, like I said, you know, this is, this is, please um, look at the uh, preview option and use it uh, with uh, with caution that it, it is not recommended for, um, for production workloads. So with that, let me take a quick look at the notes here. Again, if you are a presenter um, and if you are using the, these, be sure to check these notes. Um, they have, uh, you know, a presenter's notes uh, in case you need to review them. Now let's move to scenario number three. Let's look at what drives the the need for number three. So I put a requirement over here, right? So if you have a third party firewall like a Cisco or Apollo or a Checkpoint, a, a third party SD-WAN appliance, uh, that's where this design is used. So now, um, and it also solves some of the routing um, scenarios. So let's look at uh, this feature called BGP endpoint. So in the VBAN, we, we have similar to what we did last week with Azure Route Server. Uh, in VBAN, we have a hub router uh, and you, you can peer your NVA with the hub router uh, using eBGP peering, and then you can advertise the quad zero route, which kind of goes down this way as well, just very similar to the Azure firewall. And then what that gives you, and this is the use case for this design, is it, it gives you this north-south flows. So north-south, again, north-south in this um, session means that the traffic that's egressing uh, to the uh, from our sites branches or our spokes to the internet okay so this pink flow is is uh, north south and again i only show one site but it's applicable to all of the sites all right um, so that's our north south flows um, you can also light up this optional IP. Sometimes I use this diagrams as my own notes. So notice I have ran a curl command and it shows me the IP of this firewall when it reaches the internet. I'm running ifconfig.me. Same thing if I'm a point to site client, I get the IP of this firewall, right? So sometimes I light up these layers just as a note to myself or just, um, you know, just to see where my lab was at any given time, a state of my lab. Um, now, another use case for this BGP endpoint or the scenario three is let's say that you have this NVA hanging off of an NVA subnet, and this NVA could be an SD-WAN appliance, right? So in other words, Let's say you didn't have this or you could have both together as well, but let's say that you did that that your SD WAN was hanging off of this uh, cloud was hanging off of this firewall. 
Uh, in that case, you can similar to the quad zero advertisement. Let's say you had a 172.18 network for your SD WAN. You can advertise those down this way, and that drives this green flows. Yeah, this green flow. So from an express route connected branch, you can reach an SD WAN connected branch. This was a, a scenario I, I worked with an, an AVS customer. So kind of corner uh, that I've documented this as well over here. Now let's see what happens to the east west flows in this design. Again, I do not south, east west, and then Interhub just to keep uh, things organized. So east west, this goes into level three to four hundred. All right. So east west, uh, let's look at this green flow. So if you want to steer traffic from the spokes to the branches through the NVA, it is possible. It, there is, if you have this a diagram and if you click on it, I have created a link to the precise documentation that shows you exactly how to do it. It does require custom route table, um, but you can achieve this flow. Again, this is the art of the possible. Mark's um, ha uh, lab goes into very deep detail of, of custom route tables, so be sure to check that out. But for you to uh, achieve this flow, you need to use the custom route table. All right, now let's look at the pink flow. With this NVA design, the pink flow will bypass the NVA, all right? And then so similarly, the blue flow will meaning from branch to HQ or branch to an express route connected branch, uh, a site to site to an express route connected branch will also bypass the, uh, the NVA and it, it applies to all of these branches, okay? So Again, the use case for this NVA, a very common use case is like I mentioned, SD-WAN and NVA. So be sure to know what your requirements are and what the use cases are. So we did the East-West. Now let's look at Interhub. So how does the Interhub flow look like? Oh, and this is a good time for me to show you this really nice feature called Outline and Draw.io. So as your diagram gets a little bit bigger, you could use this kind of outline for you to kind of get to the right place in your diagram, okay? So I'll turn this off for now, but. All right, so Interhub, you could see that Interhub also, so let's look at the orange flow, also bypasses this NVA. And similarly, this um, blue flow, which is branch to branch, also bypasses the NVA, all right? Now let me let me make sure that uh, I'll take a quick look at, uh, at the notes to make sure I haven't missed anything here. All right. Yes, so now let's look at some of the routing considerations. So if you want the spoke to spoke, so if we looked at the um, east west before, if you looked at the east west bef before, you saw this pink flow. We could not steer it through the NVA. So that's what this one is showing. So let's let me light that up again. So if you want your spoke to spoke to go through to traverse the NVA, th uh, this is you cannot achieve it with this design. Again, anything red in my uh, in the flows uh, would indicate that that flow will not work. So what are our options? Let's look at the next layer. So our option here is that we use what we call 
a tiered VNAT or an indirect spokes. I think our documentation calls it indirect spoke design. In other words, you have an NVA VNAT which is hanging off of the main VWAN hub, and then you have spokes that are connected as indirect spokes. So that's what this this terminology means, right? And then you can achieve this uh, green flow, which before you couldn't achieve. So you really have to move your spokes here to to achieve that. Of course, our um, my colleague from Checkpoint, John, he's going to go over a lot of fantastic scenarios with partner integration. Um, so that's definitely coming up next, but I did want to show you the tiered VNet design. So now let's look at uh, how how the rest of the flows work in this tiered VNet design. So here uh, let's let's light up the next layer which shows the branch flows. So even your branch can now be steered through, through the NVA. Again, you will notice that I don't have the BGP peering. You can do it either with or without the uh, BGP endpoint. In this particular uh, design, you could put um, static routes in the hub default route table, all right, to achieve this. But you could also do it with BGP peering. Uh, and then you have this flow, which you, interhub, see before interhub was bypassing the firewall, now the interhub will traverse through one of the NVA. So in, in this design, it will traverse this NVA. Of course, if you were to do it from here to this way, it would traverse uh, the other NVA. All right, so that's in the other direction. And then the last layer here is. Spoke to spoke, so let me make it a little bit smaller so we can see the whole thing. So this one is the pink flow between this tiered or indirect spoke to another indirect spoke. This is the pink flow which is going um, through firewalls on both end. So quick time check here for myself. Uh, all right, so we have one. I have one more scenario in this. Um, thing in this. Um, single region, even though we're seeing multi region, I, I use the term single region because we're not using the express route bow tie design yet. So this is the new routing intent feature. Again, this is in public preview single region only. So let's look at what this feature brings to the table. Here we looked at internet traffic and then we have um, it gives you the. It, it, it gives you all of the branches, the capability to egress from Azure and also traverse the firewall. And same way, all traffic, private traffic, would also traverse the firewall, which in the other designs, some of the some of these flows were bypassing the firewall, right? So that's the key differentiator here is that everything. So if you look at the use case for this, it says private and internet traffic via the firewall, quite powerful. Again, it's not available and it's only currently available in single region and you cannot turn on both private and internet at the same time currently, but again, we're sharing something that is uh, still in preview. And then lastly, I want to show you the inner hub uh, again. Today, this is only available region one, region one, both same region, but quite powerful. It goes through all of these flows go through the firewall. Both ways, so this purple flow is spoke to spoke. Blue is branch to branch, quite powerful through the firewall, and then green one going from um, site once site in one region to spoke in another region. With that, I have a few more minutes, and I will cover um, I will cover multi region. So in a 
multi region design. This is a classic bow tie or a uh, um, crisscross design, this being the cross over here. Uh, and basically you're providing redundant connections for hybrid connectivity. So this site would have redundant connections to both of this region. Uh, of course, in this design, we are showing express route, but if you are running VPN, uh, BGP over IPsec, you can do that crisscross design the same way. And we also have express route with VPN failover. So I have an optional layer of ASN in case uh, you're having conversations with customers. And then I have inter hub flow. Notice how the inter hub flows are, are going, are uh, hairpinning through the MSEEs. All right, and, it, and the dotted line, sometimes the return traffic can also traverse the other, other leg. So just be aware of that. And lastly, I want to show you how you can leverage the inter hub connectivity instead of hairpinning through the MSEE. And that's done using the feature called hub routing preference. And I have a screen capture of that here, uh, how you could change the hub routing preference. And the last scenario I want to cover here is remember how I mentioned that we have a workaround for that this scenario that when your spoke to spoke traffic gets asymmetric, that's how you can achieve this. So this flow, the one that here pins through the MSEE gives you that workaround. Of course, you want to be mind uh, aware of that extra, the extra latency, and of course, you are are burdening the express route gateways with with this design as well. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining and listening. And again, your feedback is really important to us, so do let us know.